So they're going to watch it this afternoon. Yeah, and then this is funny because on because you didn't get to go to meeting, but on there he's got in red record the meeting, right? <laughs> we always laugh because I can leave sticky notes everywhere and still okay. I'm the same uh, way. Thank you. Uh, so with that said, uh, the system has that plan, do, check, and adjust cycle uh, structured into it. And come around 2011, when FAB came along, uh, this department had a fully demonstrated performance management system. And, you know, since then, we have 240 health departments using our system, including yourself, for different um, phases of accreditation and some that are using it just as operational planning and documentation storage. Um, we're able to reach all levels in your department. And why that is important is in order to do that check phase and adjust phase that so you can get into a, a QI plan, you're going to need to have feedback from the people who are doing the activities. And this kind of a eliminates the objective lead or the group lead to have to call around and collect the information because that information is automatically going to come in as they retrieve emails to remind them, hey, update your information. They go back into the system, update their activities. And here we have the uh, real-time planning. The, uh, the definition of performance management when it comes to the dashboard this is a, a pretty standard methodology and it's three basic steps and that's creating your operational plan and um, your operational plan is just a specific group doing a specific set of activities in a specific time frame and then you're going to monitor that plan and so when as we're monitoring it um, we're going to monitor it on several different levels so you've got your your macro level your maybe your health department level you've got your group level of monitoring your dashboard and then we uh, go a little step further and we want to monitor the objectives and the activities would you be able to catch anything that might go awry during uh, the process of of executing your plan and then we have uh, a public interface that you are able to report how you're doing um, on all your goals uh, services initiatives not only to the public but a lot of people use this particular feature for reporting to the Board of Commission. Um, then the very last step is the uh, performance improvement part. So now you've created that plan. Now you're monitoring it on several different levels and then you're checking it, you make your adjustments and then you go back into the plan. Um, the way that is structured in the dashboard, we wanna give you kind of a hierarchy view, a hierarchical view and so we give you this pyramid so as fred is going to open up live into the dashboard you're going to see some navigational tabs going from left to right and this is giving you the picture of really how it's structured so the very first tab you'll see is your health department the next tab is going to be your groups your groups could be your workforce development your strategic plan chip your cha um community health and underneath each group is going to be your subgroups and what are services and initiatives but i just wanted to let you know that your groups will be having subgroups as well so if you have your community health department you're going to have a subgroup maybe like a program of tobacco cessation that's what fred is going to show you here and then underneath those groups you're going to have their own set of services and initiatives underneath those services and initiatives they're going to have their own set of goals objectives and activities now this is where Fred thinks that breathing is overrated, and and um, I, b as I was learning this, I got high anxiety seeing this um, this whole demonstration because I'm saying, crud, I have to learn what. Uh, so like I said, we break this down piece by piece in the the next trainings that that are coming about. So just relax, don't like again, you don't have to take notes, but if you have any questions, it probably help everybody else too. Just stop him. Let them breathe. And um, are you ready to go for that drink for hot from a fire hose? I'm ready, Andrew. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I, of course, don't want to distract from his beauty. So I get off camera. <laughs> Thank you, just Andrew. so I can drink my coffee. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye.
what we're going to do now is we're going to go live into the system and we're going to walk through those three phases Andrew just described to you. We're going to develop a quick little operational plan. And as she mentioned, we use the example of tobacco cessation. It's pretty easy to structure and understand. Uh, then we're going to walk it through its life cycle so we can use the various tools at the, the macro level, the micro level, and then showing you uh, VMSG public. Uh, and then we're going to take it through that PDCA cycle to see how we might make quality improvement in there. So we have this demo organization. We call it USA Public Health. And I will toggle over to the system. Uh, a lot of you have probably been in the system. You guys had it for quite a while. Uh, when you log in, you're going to see a screen similar to this. And depending on your permissions as to how many of these menu items you'll see. But across the top are these tabs Andrew was talking about. So if you took that pyramid, flipped it on its left side, that's what you're looking at here. The organization is just your health department. Underneath that, the groups is the structure of your health department plus primary plans. Uh, when we talk about primary plans, typically we're talking about what FAB calls their six-pack of plans, which is the, the minimum required plans uh, for accreditation. Under each group, then, you have a set of services or initiatives under their goals, objectives, and activities. So I'm going to go to my groups tab here. Uh, under the groups tab, we have typically we start at the department level. So that's the top level. It's a, a level one group. Level two groups, like the six-pack of plans we were talking about, report up to the level one group. Uh, you get down here to, for instance, to community health. Uh, under community health, then, under community, like I said, under community health, we have tobacco and WIC. So they're level three groups reporting level two. You can go down to 10 levels deep. Nobody's ever got past five or six, to the best of my knowledge. It'll be a pretty large organization here. For today, we're going to start with our group called Tobacco 2023. And within this group, then, I'm going to go look at the specific services or initiatives provided by that group. So you can see we have three of them here. Now, what these are is just the big buckets of things we're going to be doing. The difference between a service and an initiative is pretty simple. Services are ongoing things, things that you've been doing. So I, I consider WIC to be a service. Initiatives are something that you're going to be kind of starting moving forward. So let's assume we don't have a tobacco cessation program. We're going to be moving that forward. Uh, we have, as you can see, secondhand smoke and tobacco initiation prevention. So those are three of the, the big buckets of things we might be focusing on. For today, we're going to talk about tobacco cessation. Under tobacco cessation, we're going to have a set of goals. Now, goals are pretty high level. They're not real specific, as you can see. So, for instance, reduce smoking in high schools, fairly generic. Reduce smoking in colleges. Reduce smoking in public areas. When we get to the goal level, we start assigning traffic lights in there. And traffic lights, excuse me, are a visual indication of status. If I go down here and look and see, see we have actually four different traffic lights. Um, we have the, the green, which typically indicates, as you'd expect, things are moving along as expected. Typically, in your dashboard, you'll have mostly green lights in there. When you get to yellow, that indicates something is potentially going wrong. So think about the idea of maybe the person who's uh, running this program is going to be retiring soon, and we're not going to have a new resource uh, immediately to do that, something along that line. The red light would be, you know, we lost a resource. Um, something like COVID came along and took up all our resources. So you're going to put a red light in there. Anytime you change the light, typically you're going to put a, a note down in here. So you notice we're at yellow and the note says one of the high schools is not at the planned reduction. Okay, kind of making sense. You also notice there's a gold bar in here. Gold bar indicates successful completion of that portion of the plan. Now, not every plan can get to a successful completion. So you think about reduced smoking in high schools. Are you ever going to get to zero? Hopefully, yes. If you do, hey, market is gold. If not, it's probably going to be green that you're moving along that path in there. If this said something like uh, create a strategic plan, at some point in time, you're going to be done. You're going to mark it as gold. The other thing that we've recently added down here is the ability to add data sources. Uh, data sources are just links to particular web pages in here. In this case, the CDC Smoking Cessation Fast Facts web page. You can see down here we have the, the entire web page. Now, just as an FYI, anytime you enter one of these data source links, it has to start with HTTP or HTTPS. So you got to have the full link in there. I hit OK. When I do that, you notice I have this little uh, link button over here. If I click on that, it's going to open a new browser tab and take me directly to that uh, web page. So what this is, is probably the data that I'm going to use to update my plan. So I have an immediate link to that data. And that's at the goal, the objective, and the activity level. Now back to my plan here. So I have my, my goal, my kind of high level goal of reduce smoking in high schools. When I drop down to the next level, the objective level, 
the objective level uh, are what we call SMART objectives, SMART being specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. Now, there's several variations on that, but that's kind of the, the basis of most of them here. So as an example, we have reduced smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. In order to get to that target, we're going to assign a person who's going to be kind of a program manager or project manager. In this case, it's Steve Hansen. And I can click the drop down here and say, show me all users. So it's showing everybody in our little department here. So Steve is the guy that we've selected to get us to that target of a 25% reduction. Now, a lot of uh, plans, particularly strategic plans, tend to stop at this level. We have our objective. We know what we're going to do. We're going to go out and do it. And it works really, really well right up until somebody comes up and says, hey, that's cool. How are you going to do it? And that's where we get down to what we call the operational level or the activities. Uh, a lot of people call these action steps, which exactly is what they are. It's the steps that we're going to go through to try to accomplish that objective in here. Now, in the dashboard, there are three types of activities. Project-based activity is by far the most common. Quantitative measurement would be next, and then quality assurance. So I have an example of each of those up here we're going to walk through so you can see the difference of where you use them. So our first activity, create training content and materials for students and faculty on the dangers of smoking. Every activity has got a performance metric. The performance metric just says, how do I know when I've successfully completed the activity? So if I'm gonna create training materials, once I've created the training content, I'm done with the activity. And hence it's marked as 100% down here. When you mark anything as 100%, it automatically sets the traffic light to gold for you. Now, if it's one of those activities that you're never gonna to get to 100%, you can override that and move it back to a green or whatever you need to do on a point. Every activity has got a date range, so beginning date and ending date. So in this time frame, we're going to accomplish this activity. Uh, and again, like I measured, the measurement here by default is zero to 100%. So in this particular case, you can see we completed chapter one, and you notice there's four chapters in here. So this at that point was probably 25%. Down here, we got complete chapter two, 50%, chapter three, 75, and chapter four, 100%. So it just allows you to move along that cycle. Now, there are some times when you're going to have activities that are either done or not done, or maybe it's almost like a, a yes, no question. You can always pop open the little wizard here. Down here, you can see we have data entry types. So the zero to 100 is the default. I could say yes, no. So if I have a, uh, you know, a, a type of activity that basically can be an answer with a yes, no, the yes equals 100% when it's checked. The no when it's unchecked equals 0%. So it's just a, it's either done or not done. And I have the, the other option of complete. So in this particular case, if I was creating this training material in the course of, let's say, a week, at the end of the week, I can go in and just check the box and say we're complete in there. So just a couple of different options. Here. Okay, now, the other thing, every activity has got a team of people assigned to it. So over here are my team leads and team members. I can click on the pencil icon to open that up. Now, the first thing it shows me is the people within the selected group, Tobacco 2023, and Steve Hansen's the only person within that group. If I want to look at other groups, I can hit the drop down, but typically what I'm going to do is click the little black X, which opens it up to the whole department. We have three columns over here, team members. So I've got, uh, you can see I have three team members, Diane, William, and Andrea are team members. I've assigned Diane as the team lead at the activity level, and then the email notification. Email notification, we're going to talk a lot about today because it's extremely important uh, when we get into the PDCA cycle. What this is, is indicating that Diane is going to get an automated email from the system on a regular basis, which is typically monthly. And she's going to go back in through a link in the email to go back in and update this particular activity. And in fact, update all the activities that she's been assigned. What that does is allow us to have real-time information to work our plans with. We'll see in the PDCA cycle how that comes into play. Over here in the top right, you have the ability to track the human effort involved in doing, in this case, this particular activity, FTE or full-time equivalent. It's a zero to one. So you can see that Diane has indicated it's about a 0.1 FTE or about 10% of her time. William, about 10%. And Andrea, about 30% of her time. What we do with that is several things. One of those is we roll it up the pyramid. So at the activity level, you can see we have a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, totaling up to a 0 0.5. So a, a one half of an FTE to get to this particular activity during the time frame of the activity. If I take all three of these activities and roll them up to their objective, you'll notice it's at a 0 0.7. So the other two activities contributed about 0.2 FTE to get to there. So this is the ability to, again, track the human effort involved in doing any level of the plan. 
Most often this is just used during budgeting cycles. Uh, other than that, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you just wanna get the total FTEs for people, which we'll show you a bit later here. Back to my activities. The other thing you have is the ability to assign external partners. So there's an external partner database that's all of your partners that you manage. Again, clicking on the pencil icon here. So I've got four external partners here. In this case, I've selected the MST dashboard as a partner. Brett Erickson is the contact within that partner. So you can have as many of these partners as you want, and every partner can have as many contacts as you want. I can assign, if I don't have a, a specific contact within a partner, I can assign just the organization with the little checkbox over here. The other thing you can do if you choose to is you can make these external partners as users to be able to get the email notification to update the activity. So if you're working on your chip, for instance, and you've got a bunch of external partners, instead of you having to find get hold of them and play phone tag and email tag and whatever, collect the information, go back into the system, log in, find the specific activities and do your updates, they can get the email notification directly. They can go back in through a limited access, we call a partner access, into the system and update their particular activities <clears throat> to be able to keep that information up to date without having to go through that long drawn out cycle of collecting the information. So that's our first activity is creating the training content. Gold bar says, hey, we're done with that. Our next activity then is gonna to be to take that training content, provide nine training sessions each month on the dangers of smoking to students and faculty. This is what we call a QA or quality assurance activity. Uh, the QA activity is unique in a couple of things. I'm gonna open up the wizard again here. First of all, you notice it does not have an ending date. It's got a start date and a frequency. The frequency can be anywhere between weekly and every five years. And what we're saying is it's a repetitive activity. So in this case, we're doing nine training sessions each month. What happens at the end of the month, it gives me the option to move my date uh, forward here. So my start date would become uh, maybe 4-1 or 414, whatever you're measuring in there. So I'm looking at a new time cycle every time I enter data in here. The other thing this activity does is it automatically sets the traffic light for you. Now the other ones are a manual setting on the traffic light due to the type of activity typically. This one, however, because you have specific information, you can say, if I'm greater than or equal to nine training sessions a month, it's gonna be green. And I set this value of six, it's just kind of a random value that I set in here. If it's less than or equal to six, it's gonna be red. And in between would be seven and eight, it'd be yellow. So whatever you're putting in down here is going to control the traffic light for you. So you can always look at the activity and look at the traffic light and know if it's green that you're on track. Metric type here, training sessions provided. So what, I, what happens is this data is populating my performance metric now. So in this case, it says training sessions provided, measured monthly, green, yellow, and red. So this is my second activity. I'm gonna take the training content, go to the schools and do the training. My next activity then, is what we call a quantitative measurement activity. Contact all 20 tobacco vendors within one mile of Wayne High School to ensure they're not selling to minors. Again, let's pop open the wizard here. So we've got the beginning and ending date. So in this time frame, this is very, very much like a project-based activity, except instead of us calculating the percent, we're gonna put uh, values, decimal values in there and let it calculate the percent for us. In this case, we've set a target of 20. So we've got 20 tobacco vendors. We're counting in decimal just means we're, we're counting something, counting widgets, whatever it is. Or we can select dollars. In this case, we're doing budgets or grants or whatever, and you want to be able to measure in dollars. In this case, we're saying 20 tobacco vendors contacted. We have a data entry type down here. Of, uh, the default is enter a value to add to total. And what that means is over here, I see this add to field. If I put a five in here, it's going to add this uh, into the total, make it 25. Calculate my percent complete is 125%. If I'm going to be doing this entire activity over the course of, let's say, one week, and I just want to enter a value of 20 and be done, I can say enter a new total value. This summary field goes away down here, just gives me this field to enter it in there. So that's the, the QM activity. Those are the three types of activities. Again, project based is the most common, quantitative measurement would be the second most common, and then the QA, the repetitive activity, would be the third most common. Now, if I take a look at this plan we just created in the pyramid, it looks like this. The group that we selected was Tobacco 2023. Of the three initiatives, we're today working on tobacco cessation. Under tobacco cessation, we had three goals. Today, we're working on reduce smoking in high schools. Then we had that SMART objective, reduce smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. 
and then the steps we're going to go through to get there. So that's the planning process. This planning model has been predated me for sure. I've been in public health about 21 years now. And it has predated me. It's been around forever. Um, you will see areas where the, the nomenclature is different. And in the next level of training, we go to the operational planning. We'll show you different examples of that. But this is the, the planning model that every plan that you have will be in. The nice thing about that is as you're looking across plans, you're always comparing the same thing. So it always makes it easier to determine where am I in the plan. So that's the plan we just created. Now, we're going to take that plan we just created and walk it through the PDCA cycle. So the P part is done. We've got the plan. The next thing is our do phase. And our do phase, what we're going to do is create the training content. We're going to take that training content and go out to the schools and do our nine training sessions a month. And in parallel with all of that, we're going to go start contacting 20 tobacco vendors. This is where the real-time planning comes in. Those people that we assign as the objective lead and the activity lead are going to go back into the system, typically on a monthly basis, and update the information. So how far along are we in creating the training content? How many trainings did we do this past month at the schools? How many tobacco vendors did we contact in there? We got all that information. The reason that's critical is without having that information, there's no way to do the check phase. So you got two choices. You can either let the system go out and collect it for you, automatically, or you can manually go out and talk to those three folks who are you know, developing content, doing training, contacting tobacco vendors, find out where they are, take that information, put it in the system so you can use the check phase. Much easier to let the system do the work for you in the background. Now, back to the check phase. Typically, I'm going to look at my objective level since it's a finite target here. <coughs> So my objective is to reduce smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. I'm looking down here at the bottom, we have our percent reduction is currently 25%. So what we're saying is we have a plan of 25, we have an actual 25, looks like everything's working really well. Back to PDCA. So that's the check phase. If you're collecting all the information in the background, that's all there is to it. You can take a look at that and say, hey, we're there. Now the adjust phase. In the adjust phase, we're going to make corrections if necessary. Well. Based on what we just saw, no corrections are necessary. The plan works, continue to execute. Every once in a while, go back in and check it, continue on through this cycle. Now let's look at a different example. We're gonna reduce smoking at Desert Vista High School by 25%. Notice the yellow light out here. I'm gonna go down to my notes field. It says not quite to the 25% target, COVID restrictions on training and vendor visits. Okay, at this level, we can also look at the historical reference here on the chart. So what we're saying is when we first started the program, we had no reduction. And we ramped up our reduction, ramped up. We got to 21%, not our 25%. So in this case, what we're saying is we're a little bit behind schedule and probably, again, based on the, the COVID. So now what I'm saying is we're not quite at our target. However, what I don't know is why. That's why I'm going to drill down to the activity level. So our first activity is create the training content. The gold bar says, don't you have to look at it? It's done. The next one, however, we got a big red light sitting here. That's that QA activity, the one that set the light automatically. If I look down here, my actual value is five, which is below my six, which is my red light in here. So we know we've got an issue. Let's look at the chart on that one. So the first month we ramped up to nine, second month nine, third month nine, and then we started falling off the face of the earth here. Let's assume this is the point in time when kids started staying home due to COVID, having to learn virtually from home. Our training was to go to the schools and do the training. So obviously we can't do the training. So if we can't do the training, Obviously, we're not going to be able to use that as a, a positive to get to our target. The other thing we have down here is contacting all 20 tobacco vendors. It says down here, difficulty contacting vendors due to COVID restrictions. Again, look at the chart. So we started ramping up, got up to 11, 12, 14, 15 vendors capped off there. We haven't got to those last five tobacco vendors. And, you know, possibility they're doing something bad that we don't want them to be doing. So when we think about this, we look between... Uh, not being able to do the training and not contacting tobacco vendors is probably why we're not on target. So back to PDCA. At this point in time, we are going to want to make adjustments. There's really kind of two adjustments that you can make at this point. Now, if you look at the whole situation, like you're going into COVID, uh, you're not going to be able to put any additional resources into a program like this because all your resources are you know, used up doing uh, vaccinations and doing testing and that sort of thing. You might want to say, I want to hold it at 21%. So with the current resources, we can probably hold it 21%. So let's move the plan from 25 down to 21. So during the period of COVID, when we can't add additional resources, we can go ahead and have a successful plan. 
Now, if possible, that we could add some resources in here, we could probably get some resources that would get us back to that plan. Now, we had kind of two things that we needed to look at. Number one is we had training going to the schools. Well, nobody's at school, can't do the training. Why don't we build a Zoom-based training or something along that line that we can now get to the kids while they're at home? So we can get probably almost the same effectiveness of training going to Zoom and getting to those kids at home. So that's one of the resources we can adjust. The other one is, you know, could we find maybe an external contractor we could pay out of some grant funds to be able to get them to go contact those other five tobacco vendors? So that'd be a different resource. The fourth scenario might be a combination of adjusting the plan and the resource. So in this case, maybe we take the plan from 25 to 23 and we just go to the Zoom training and forget about the tobacco vendors. So those are the four scenarios in the PDCA cycle. Again, every one of those is fed by the ability to collect information in the background. Now, we talked about micro level, which is what we were just talking about. Those, those charts at the objective and activity level, we consider it micro level. Macro level performance monitoring is looking at the big picture here. I'm going to take you back to the system here. I'm going to go to my screen. I can have a dashboard at any level in here. I can have a dashboard for the entire department on one screen. I can look at just my strategic plan on one screen. Let's assume for a second that I'm the community health director. and Under community health, I have a tobacco program and I have WIC. I come in in the morning and I just want to say, hey, how are things performing in my division? So all I need to do is go up and click on the traffic light in the top right corner. What it's going to do, it takes about uh, 10, 12 seconds to gather up all the data points to give me the screen that I'm looking for here. But what it's going to do is show me a very succinct performance chart of exactly how we're doing in community health. So the first thing I'm looking at is the top left corner, and all it is is the number of traffic lights in each status. You'll notice I get the little click finger when I roll over, meaning I can drill down on anything on this screen. I also have a schedule gauge here. The schedule gauge is saying that I'm aggregately five days ahead of schedule for everything within community health. So that's pretty good. And that could be in a combination of some things behind, some things ahead, but aggregately we're at five days ahead of schedule. That's the reason it's green. Once I get behind schedule, it turns yellow. Once I get 60 days behind schedule, it turns red. I can look at the activity level. I can move up the pyramid to the objectives or the goal level. Same thing in here. Down at the bottom, I have three different views to look at. Uh, number one, I have my activity leaders. So those folks we assigned as the activity leads that appear down this column. First thing I see over here is the last time this person updated the information. Again, in an ideal world, you want everybody to be green, meaning less than 30 days ago. If it's yellow, it's 30 to 60 days. If it's red, it's over 60 days. Ideally, again, if everything is green, I know that I'm working with pretty real-time information as I'm doing my check phase on PDCA. Here's another roll-up of that FTE. If you wanted to go through and assign all of your staff to all the different activities and then come back here and say, Diane is doing the work of two, a little over two people, that's not good. You've got uh, William doing a 1.0, which is kind of exactly where you want to be. And you've got Tom doing a 0.5 down here. So you can go through and, again, click on these, adjust them to different people, try to get everybody balanced out at about a 0.9 or 1.0 FTE. The lagging column is indicating that I have activities that are calculated to be behind schedule uh, and color-coded as to how far. The days column is the same as the schedule gauge up here for the individual person. So you're seeing how far ahead of or behind schedule each person is. Overdue means that uh, this person has activities that are past the ending date and not yet 100% complete. And then the number of red, yellow, green, and gold. So for all the people within community health, I can look across here and just get a good snapshot of how they're performing. Other things I can look at, number one are groups. So in this particular case, I had community health and under community health, I had tobacco and WIC. So if I click on that, it's gonna show community health, tobacco and WIC, and basically give me the same information over here for the groups. My third view is priorities. These would be the strategic priorities from your strategic plan. Typically, there's somewhere between three and seven of them down this column. And again, what we're doing is mapping those against every other plan in the system to make sure that everything you're doing rolls up to your strategic plan, which is kind of what it has to be. Top right corner, my priorities. These are objectives that you personally want to keep your eye on. I can roll over these, click down on the objective, uh, set them and unset them. There's just a little uh, flag on the objective screen. You click, turns green, and they appear on your login only. So everybody can select the same ones, everybody can select different ones. Most often you're selecting things that are 
uh, important to you. So they're either things you're working on personally or that your team is working on. And they're typically yellows and reds because if they're green and gold, they're on track or, or completed. And just want to keep them front and center up here. So when you go look at it, and this is real time. So these traffic lights will change. So if somebody's back here working on this one, changes it to a green, it'll change right here. I can click on it, uncheck the flag, take it off of there. So this is my, my dashboard screen. Again, I can look at any level in the department, the macro level being the entire department all the way down to any single plan or any single group or subgroup. Now, over COVID, we had a lot of extra time while you guys were out saving the world. And we decided to add a bunch of functions that people have been asking for. One of those is what we call VMSG Mobile. That same screen you were just looking at is now available on your phone. Uh, this is the same screen, top left corner, bottom, top right corner. Functionality is identical. I can drill down on anything on these screens, uh, collect up all the information, look at any level in the department. And kind of a cool thing about this is, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of departments have locked down cell phones uh, that are company cell phones, basically. So your IT folks lock them down so you can't put bad stuff on there. Uh, this is not an app. So if you try to go to the App Store and look up the VMSG app, there is no such thing. This is actually an application that's built dynamically in the web browser on your phone. So you go to the link at VMSG, login.vmsg-dashboard.com. You go to that link, it's gonna let you log in on your phone just as, as though you're on your computer, and then you're gonna be able to go to this screen on your phone. So you can always get a status check on your phone without having to go any further. So the reason I put this slide in here is just to emphasize that what we just talked about is the core functionality of performance management and particularly the VMSG dashboard. So as Andrew mentioned, we have about 240 departments using it. Most of them are in some phase of accreditation or reaccreditation. Uh, if you were to take those FAB six packet plans and put them in the system, uh, you use the accreditation plans that we have built into the system. We'll show you those in a few minutes here. And you got real time planning going in there. You will get, uh, and, and just FYI, every department who's done that and gone through FAB accreditation has gotten fully demonstrated by FAB, which is the highest level of compliance for measure 9.1.1 in here. So this is what you wanna be doing for performance management. Now, what I'm gonna go through next are the additional functions. We've had a lot of people come up and say, hey, wouldn't it be great if, and so we built a lot of other tools in there. We're gonna be talking about some of those other tools. But before I go there, I'd just like to open it up for any questions. Questions? Questions? I promised you a drink out of a fire hose, didn't I? <laughs> there don't seem to be any questions as of yet. Okay. And remember, there's no test at the end. So just sit back, relax, <laughs> enjoy what's coming on. Again, this is just the big picture here. We will get in future trainings. We'll get into more detail, and it'll kind of bring all this together. Okay. okay. Intelligent document management. Up until three weeks ago, this was called document management. It was originally developed to be able to add documents anywhere in the system, particularly around the accreditation process. Uh, as you guys probably know, as you go through accreditation, you're going to collect somewhere between 300 and about 1,000 documents to submit up into the EFAB system for accreditation. This allows you to manage where those documents are, get you a lot more data around the documents. You'll notice uh, descriptions and notes and traffic lights and expiration dates and all kinds of stuff. So it just allows you to collect those documents. Well, you can attach documents anywhere in the system. You can attach them to people, uh, services, groups, goals, objectives, activities in here. We had a couple of health departments uh, who came up and said, you know, if we have all these documents in here, is there a way that we can manage those documents? We have hundreds of standard operating procedures. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, memos of understanding, MOUs. We have a bunch of policies in there. And our problem is with all of these policies, they're all scattered around. Somebody has to update those, say, on an annual basis in here. We have to know when it's time to be updated. We don't have a vehicle to do that. So what we did is we, we converted it to intelligent document management. In the quality assurance activity, you might have noticed there's a little timeline checkbox. When you click that, what it says is just give me a percent value of the timeline, which let's say it's annual, a percent value of the timeline to set that light to yellow and notify the lead. So this is an example of what a plan might look like. Under administrative services, you have a service called SOPs. Our first goal says manage and update all of the administrative SOPs, so everything that's administrative in nature. We have another goal down here, manage and update all emergency operations SOPs. 
And then you could have you know dozens of those goals, breaking them down into categories. The first objective under here says, uh, the document that's attached is destruction of records, uh, SOP, PDF, uh, manage and update the destructions of records, SOP. So we've got the document attached right there. Now that allows anybody who's got access to the system, you can give them read access to this. They can go down and get to that document. It's all described as to what's in there. They can open that document, use it, and then they're done with it. Underneath that, however, we added this activity, this new QA activity type called a timeline. This document links back to this document that's at the objective level. And in the timeline, we're going to say we're going to update destruction records SOP annually. So we set it for an annual recurring cycle. And then we're going to say 80% and whatever you want. We're going to say 80% of the way there, it's going to set that light to yellow. And then it's going to notify that person who's the uh, activity lead to go in and start doing the update on this particular SOP. Uh, so what you can do is assign the people who are responsible and the timelines. You set the beginning date and it just automatically manages that entire process. You can have as many of these documents as you want, uh, any size document, any type of document, we don't manage any of that stuff, have whatever you want in there. So this is really a kind of a cool thing and it's really taken off uh, in the departments where they have all kinds of documents to manage and need to be able to do it intelligently. Uh, lots and lots of reports in the system. In the, let's see, the fourth training, we'll go through what we call performance monitoring, which includes all the different reporting in here. But the, the basic report that you use most of the time is this operational plan report. For the example we're using today, it looks like this. So under the group tobacco cessation, the initiative or group tobacco initiative tobacco cessation, this green indicates there's a document attached right to that initiative. You can have as many of these documents attached as you want. They can be attached to any level in here. Under here is that data source, that link we talked about, CDC smoking cessation fast facts, showing you that it's attached there. Objectives, activities, the stuff in blue are the notes that you put in there. There's switches on top of the report to turn off the documents and turn off the notes if you want to, uh, you know, if you just want to show a clean report to somebody. If you look at this, you got every piece of data that's in there. And probably the only guy who really, really wants to have this level of detail is Steve, who's the objective lead. Everybody else just kind of wants to know, hey, how are we doing? And that's where VMSD Public came about. One of the requirements of, of FAB accreditation under uh, Domain 9 is to be able to share the information, share your status with staff, with uh, the board, and with the, the public in here. So we created VMSD Public as a very simple way to create public-facing web pages out of any data elements in the system. So again, this is our same example of to, uh, tobacco cessation. So our goal of reduced smoking in high schools, I go over here and it says we have uh, three complete, three gold, uh, one yellow, one green, one red, and we're 11 days behind schedule. This we call an indicator row, and you see three of them on this page. I'm down at the objective level or down at the activity level. Everything's got rollovers on it so I can see how far along we are in the process in here. So what you're able to do is, is create as many indicator rows on a page as you want and as many pages as you want. What we see this used for a lot is when people are reporting out quarterly, let's say, on their strategic plan. The very top row might be your entire strategic plan, every activity in the strategic plan. Below that, you might have each of the strategic initiatives in your strategic plan, a row for each of those and how are they doing. So people can kind of look and just get a, a good quick snapshot of performance in there. What you end up doing is creating this unique web address. Uh, that is hosted up on our server. If you go back and do an update, you can update that exact same address. So if you take this to your IT folks and say, hey, put a link up on our website so the public can see how we're doing on our strategic plan or our accreditation plan or whatever it is, you can do all those updates uh, behind the scenes. The link stays the same for you. You can also just copy this link and put it to email and send it off to the board, for instance, and say, here's how we're doing on our strategic plan or accreditation or whatever it happens to be that you are reporting out to them on. So it's a real simple way. Once you do this one time, it's maybe a five minute process to create one of these web pages. And we'll go through that in the uh, performance monitoring training. Um, we got two more quick sessions to go through, but are there any questions before I go there? Does anybody have any questions? So far? No? It seems clear at this point. Yeah. No nope. so far. Andrea actually made me put these slides in so I would just take a breath. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
No questions so far, Fred. Okay, away we go. Three-dimensional planning. This, over time, you'll find is a very cool tool. What it is, is the ability to categorize anything in the system against a set of standards. You've got a, a, sense of, a set of public health standards in there that are already in there, like the FAB standards and um, things along that line. Uh, but you also can build your own standards in there so you can look across things. So what you're trying to look for are things where I have commonalities across various plans or have gaps or have overlaps in there. So for instance, which pieces of which plans are related to public health essential number one? And obviously you can do that with all the essentials. Same thing with the FAB standards. So at some point in time, you're gonna have a, a site review, whether it's accreditation or reaccreditation, and the people wanna know how are we doing against FAB standard 6.1, for instance. You can bring up what we call a category tag report. What that shows you is everything you're doing across the entire department related to FAB standard 6.1. Credit site visitors love that stuff because it's right there in one place in front of them. They don't have to go chasing around looking at all your documents. They're all right there. The strategic priorities for your strategic plan are typically mapped against everything else in the system just to make sure that everything you're doing rolls up to your strategic plan. And you can do that with the documents as well. So I can tag every document in the system against whatever standards I want. In this case, FAB standard 4.2. These are the three documents we're going to submit into EFAB for standard 4.2 makes it super easy to go back and find them. So this is something that once you get a lot of plans up and running in the system, that you can go through this. And again, we have a training module on this as well. Uh, accreditation and reaccreditation plans are all built into the system. So let me take you live there again. There are bunches and bunches of them. Oops, oops. So if I go down here, um, We've got all the version 1.5 plans, which are the ones that were kind of obsoleted as of uh, July 1 of this past year. So there's accreditation, state, local, and tribal. There's reaccreditation. Uh, now there's the new ones in there, the FAB 2022, state, local, and tribal. And then they have individual reaccreditation plans for state, local, and tribal. And then there's the new one in there, this pathways recognition. Um, just to give you a, a kind of a perspective, the old FAB accreditation 1.5 had 135 measures. The new one, and, and 10, 12 domains. Uh, the new one, 2022, has 10 domains and 85 measures, so they streamlined it a lot. The uh, FAB Pathways Recognition is 35 of those 85 measures, so it's kind of a, a starting point. It's apparently a lot less expensive to get started doing that, and once you get past that, you can then move on to the next phase of accreditation. So all the plans are in there. You can have as many of them as you want. We don't charge for any of that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and kind of walk through. Let's look at uh, FAB reaccreditation 2022 local. So as I walk down through the pyramid, first thing I see is the accreditation process. And it just walks you through. So you got preparation, application, document selection, your site review. They're going to make a decision whether you pass or not. Then you go into the reaccreditation process. And these all have plans underneath them that walk you through. Uh, the other thing we've done is use that data source in here to go right back to FAB's documents. So I can go into here and take a look at the FAB documents specifically for uh, Come on, you can do it. I know you can. There we go. So the standards and measures, and it takes you right to the specific page uh, within the document for that particular standard and measure in there. So it just gives you the, the FAB reference as well as what's in the plan. Where you really get down in the detail is when you get down each of the domains. So under the domain, you're going to have the standards. Under each standard, and again, you see we have the, the links down here. Under each standard, you're going to have the uh, objectives, which are the measures. And this is where the documents get attached typically. Down here, you say we need a one community health assessment dated within five years, which is really nice unless you have no idea what's in a community health assessment. That's where you get down to the activity level, which says, Here's the seven items that are required to be in a community health assessment. The first one is including in the CHA a list of participating partners involved in the process. Okay, this is where document management comes in right here. Click on that. It says we have three documents. Oops, I only see one. The reason is because it does automatic version control. This is version three. If I say show all versions, there we go with the three versions. Traffic lights and documents typically are yellow is a draft. Green is, in the accreditation process at least, says, we're done with it. We are ready to submit this. Gold says, I've submitted it up into the uh, EFAB system. 
So if I'm scanning through all my documents, which is a document management uh, menu item on the main menu, you can look through all of your documents. You can just scan down there and look at all the ones that are green, meaning we're done with it, but we haven't submitted it yet. Then you can go and submit it and you know you're done with it. So it's just a nice tool to be able to manage all your documents in there. What we typically do uh, in the accreditation process to get you started is we will push down the objective and activity leads. So typically you'll have uh, a lot of times different folks for each domain, push all those down to the objective and the activity, uh, then we'll set the dates for you. So if you're gonna do uh, your sub document submission, the end of 2024, we'll do a 1231-24 as your submission date. Uh, and then you pick a start date, you know, maybe it's today or whenever you figure you're starting that. We set all those dates for you. That enables the real-time planning, which means that everybody who's designated as a lead here will get those email notifications to go back in and update this. So what it does is help you to walk through the entire accreditation process kind of step-by-step step and manage the whole process and understand exactly where you are. This came out of COVID. Um, you know, a lot of people were working from home, uh, health departments. Nobody was traveling much around anywhere, but there were still, believe it or not, a lot of departments who were continuing through the accreditation process. A lot of people want to do a mock site review before they're actually getting into their FAB site review. And what you're basically doing is hiring somebody who's a FAB expert to come in and review all your documents, review all your plans, just make sure you're ready for your site review to assure that you're going to pass. So instead of having to come in and, you know, airfare and hotels and all that kind of stuff, you can do it virtually through the system. You're going through the accreditation plan. There's this review button. They pop open. Uh, they have access. We set them up with access to it. We train them on how to do it. They get in the, the review information, all the notes, best practices, everything you're doing. Set the traffic light in here. When they're all done going through your plan, there's a report that you generate called the accreditation review report. It shows all of your stuff plus all of their stuff, and you can kind of go down and compare. If everything is green or gold, hey, you're ready to go. If you got a red light in there or a yellow light in there, it might say, hey, your strategic plan is due to expire before uh, it's uh, submitted up uh, into EFAB. So you might want to go in and correct that. So it's just a, a nice tool to be able to do that remotely. And again, it's built in. Training help and information. No matter where I am in the system, so I'm at the activity screen right now, if I have a question about, okay, how do I add a new activity? How do I remove an activity in here? What are all these buttons down here for? I just go up to the blue eye. It's context sensitive, so it knows where I was at activities. It gives me step-by-step -step instructions to go through everything that's on that screen. This is, I, I call this kind of the left brain approach for people like me. There's also, however, down here, a training video. And it's about five minutes long, usually, on just adding and managing activities. This is the entire user guide. It's a hyperlink PDF file that you can dock on your desktop or print, whatever you uh, are comfortable with. Then this down here is what I call implementation guidelines. What that is is stuff we've collected from uh, health departments over the years on what works best, uh, what didn't work so well, uh, what IT things we ran into with firewalls and email addresses and such. Uh, there's a couple of templates in there that we use uh, to kind of draft a operational plan before you put it in the system. We'll actually be using that in their operational planning training that comes up next. Just a lot of good stuff in there. How to engage uh, employees, how to get those people to respond to those email notifications, that sort of thing. In addition, all the training that we're going to be doing is also available on video-based e-learning right here. So the very top is the introduction, which is what we're doing today, so you can skip over that. If you like doing e-learning and want to do it on your own time schedule, you got these three modules right here, basics, operational plan development, performance monitoring. Um, these three, I think, are about two hours and 15 minutes total. You can walk through all those. Uh, if you've been assigned as administrator, there's an administrator module about managing users and groups and all that kind of stuff in there. But you can go through all these training modules you know, in a couple hours, and it's going to be very, very detailed. Uh, you probably want to have a lot of coffee with you because it's probably going to be pretty boring as you're going through it as well. But we're also planning on doing all of these trainings live for you. So we'll kind of sit through sessions like this uh, if you want to do it that way. Uh, one more section to go through, but uh, any questions here? Nope. No, so far so good. All right, good. Either you're drowning or I'm doing a really good job. <laughs> You're doing a great job, friend. Thank you. Okay, uh, intelligent real-time planning. Again, 
I have to emphasize this because you're going to find out, okay, let's say you got the FAB six pack of plans in your system. Somewhere, there's six plans, probably somewhere around three to 500 activities in there if you get them all laid out. Now, somebody has to keep those uh, activities up to date. Wouldn't it be nice if you could go to uh, the horse's mouth, the person who's actually doing the activity. So in our example, the person who's creating the training content is going to know best how far along they are. The person who's doing the training at the schools knows how many they did. The person who's contacting tobacco vendors knows how many they contacted it. So ideally, you want those people to get those emails to do the updates. And if you've got 500, 300, whatever activities, and you're going to do it manually, you'll never get it done. You'll never have real-time information to manage your plans. So here's how it works. You can set it for anywhere between daily and monthly. Most people use monthly. I would not suggest daily because people will abort and get out of here. Um, so let's say we set it for a monthly cycle and we say the first Monday of every month, we're going to look at that. So what happens at one o'clock in the morning on the first Monday of the month, the system goes in and looks at everybody you assigned as an activity lead and an objective lead, and it asks three questions. Number one, has this person been in in the last 30 days and updated their stuff? Number two, does this person have anything that's falling behind schedule? Number three, does this person have anything that's overdue past the ending date? If any of those is true, I'll go the email. As I mentioned, you can go directly to the external partners or you can go to internal folks or both. If you have kept everything up to date, you don't get an email. So if you don't meet any of those criteria, no email, no spam. In that email is a link. You click on that, it takes you down to the login and you're gonna go into what we call the quick update system. I'm gonna walk you through, for those of you who haven't been in in a while, walk you through the quick update system, the login, changing your password, all that kind of stuff in there. Once you're done going through the activity and objective quick update screen, and by the way, these screens only have three fields each to update. And then you're gonna log out. Just to give you a number, across all the 240 health departments, this average is about three to five minutes per person per month. So think about how effective that is if you distribute across the whole department plus a bunch of external partners, getting all of those hundreds of activities updated is a cakewalk because everybody is doing their own part. Now, the activities quick update screen would look like this. Down at the bottom are the three fields you update. The top is just a pyramid, basically. Down here at the bottom, I can click through the traffic light, put into my data value, you know, how many training sessions did I do, how many tobacco vendors did I contact. I can put a note in there if there's anything I want to notate, any anomalies or anything. Down here is the save and next button. I go to the next one, next one, next one, walk through it. There's a similar screen for objective quick update, which I'll take you to live in a minute here three fields to update, and you walk through and you're done. So this is a very, very efficient process for collecting the information. Now, the email that you get, and you, a lot of you have probably already seen this, looks like this. Here's why you got it. Here's the three uh, criteria I mentioned. Just FYI, for the activities you've been assigned, here's the status with traffic lights. Your uh, administrators will be assigned in here. If they haven't already, it's a simple process to do. We'll get those folks so you, if you have any questions, you know, why did I get this email? It doesn't seem to be working the way I thought it would be working. Whatever it happens to be, you can contact these folks. And then the link down here takes you right into login.vmst-board.com. Now, what I'm going to do first is walk you through the login process for those of you who are new and haven't been in uh, textually. And then I'm going to take you through the process live so you kind of have two different perspectives on it. So first of all, the link is login.vmst-board.com. If you just want to remember vmsgdashboard.com, it'll take you to the VMSG dashboard homepage. On the top right corner, there's a link you can click on. It says, if you're already a user, click here to log in. Go in us. Either way, uh, the login dialog box has three buttons. The leftmost button is send, meaning send me my uh, login information. The next dialog box, you're going to enter your email address after you click send and hit send again. If you receive a dialogue that says success, that means, hey, I found your email, found your login information, sent you an email. If you get anything else in there, contact me, uh, meaning your account is not in there, email address is wrong, something like that. Then there's a login button I'll show you again on the main screen. You click on that. It's going to take you back to your login. And in the future, once you, you, know, once you get your documentation or your credentials once, you don't need to do it again. Then you're going to enter either your user ID or email address. If you don't want to remember a new user ID, just put your email address in there. It's fine. And then your password, and you click login. So that's the process. Now I'm going to take you live, walk you through that process just so you see it. 
Here's the log off button up here, right? Click on that or click on that, hit log off. It's going to take me to the VMSG dashboard homepage. And this is what I was talking about. If you just go to VMSG dashboard.com, net, or org, any of them work. Here's the link up here. If you're already a user, log in here. So I'll click on that. It's going to take me to that login page again. So down here, I, I've got the send button. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to put in my email address. And I'm going to hit send again. The good news is it found me. That's really good news for me, anyhow. Uh, it says success. We found your stuff and we sent you an email. Now, the email that you get is going to look similar to this. It's going to say, here's your user ID and here's your password. If it's the first time you've logged in, you're probably going to have a crazy cryptic string and password that you don't want to remember. I'll walk you through changing that out in a minute here. Uh, the user ID can either be what they put in here as your user ID. Typically, it's first name, dot last name, but it can be first initial, last name, or several different things. Um, the other thing, again, you can use your email address as opposed to this user ID if you want to. Now, back to the system. So I hit OK. Here's that login button I was talking about. I'll click on that. When I do that. It opens up my dialog again. This time, I'm going to put in my username or email, put in the password that was in the email, hit login. Now, if I have been assigned as an objective or an activity lead, I get this dialog. Say that I can go to the main menu, which is where we've been the whole time, or my quick update screen. So I'm going to select quick update. That's going to take me to my activities quick update screen for just my activities in here. So this is the quick update screen. As I mentioned, the top is merely context. Top of the pyramid, group, service, goal, objective, activity. It says one of 17 I'm going to be updating today. And then down here are the three fields. You see the rollover, I can click through my traffic lights, put in a data value, put in a note, hit the next button, next button. I also have access to those uh, source documents down here. My document management is up here, so I can attach that in there. Now, again, if it's the first time or you want to change your password, just click on a key button up here. Current password, I would copy and paste out of the email, put in whatever new password you want, hit update, and you're all set to go. Now, for now, I'm just going to walk through all of my 17 activities. Uh, and by the way, there's a lot of times you go look at that and say, nothing's changed, hit the next button. Nothing's changed, hit the next button. Oh, this is now 55%. I'll change that. Uh, maybe it's back on track, put it on green, put a note in here, whatever it happens to be, walk on through it. I'm going to go on through these. So I'm on uh, activity 17 of 17 now. I've also been assigned as an objective lead. So when I click it next time, it says you're an objective lead. Go to your objective screen. We'll click on that. It'll take me to a similar screen, except the objective, which is above the activities in the pyramid, is up here. Again, three fields, traffic light, data value, notes field, next button. We hit the next button here. And one thing you'll notice is that the activities are below the objective, which they come in the pyramid that way, right? And you might notice that there are two different types here. The blue indicates these are activities that have been assigned to me personally, which means you just went through and updated them. So you don't even need to look at them again. The gray means these are activities that I, as the objective lead, have probably assigned to somebody else on my team. But being the objective lead, I have the permission to go in and update it. So I can, the gray ones are things that are assigned to somebody else, but I can go in and update them if I want to. And then I'm going to uh, go through all my objectives and log out, and I'm all done to go here. Quick update is also available on your phone. So let's uh, use the example. You're, you're driving into the office in the morning, decide you want to stop at Starbucks and have a coffee. You get in there, get your coffee, you pop open your phone, you see this email from the VMSG dashboard. There's a link in there. Click on the link on your phone. It'll ask you to log into uh, VMSG Mobile. You can select Quick Update in there, and you go through your activities, your objectives, hit the next button, next button, next button, log out, and you're done for the month. So it's just a, a nice, convenient way to be able to do it wherever you need to be able to do it here. So as promised, that was your drink out of a fire hose for the day. Any questions? Anything else you'd like to say? Fred, thank you so Does much. Does anybody have any questions? These are, Fred, these are our newer employees that are here that have been um, brought on board post-COVID. So we're going to we're going to dive into our VMSG account and show them, you know, all the plans and that we have in there. And 
So, you, um, you need any help, you know, readjusting things after COVID? A lot of people changed, you know, people changed. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, let, <laughs> we definitely let, did that. Yeah, let me know, and I will. I'll be happy to help you get everything back on track here. Uh, we can work work with you to update your plans if you have plans that are still good in there, but the dates need to be updated. We can help you with that. Right. We can mass Thank push you. dates and things. Uh, I would like to set up the next level training, and this is for folks who are actually going to be doing planning. So they're actually going to either enter okay. an existing plan or develop a okay. new plan. We'll, we'll schedule that. I'll have Andrea contact you to set up sure. a date for that. And here, here's kind of the next steps. We're going to do that. It's about a 45 minute training. Walks you through. Okay. Here's what it looks like. Here's how you do it. We're actually going to enter a plan in there. And we're going to show you the okay. one of the templates we use. After that, we ask everybody who's in there to go away and create a little fun plan. Uh, you can do it business if you want to, but a lot of people just create something like, I'm going to do my Las Vegas vacation. Uh, I'm going to do a weekend with my kids. Things like that that are just kind of, you know, in your head and fun. The idea right. is, do you understand the planning process? And right, right. We're going to have another session. We're actually going to go back and I'll put you front and center and review those plans. So don't put anything wow. bad in there while you're doing it. And we're going to review those okay. plans and just make sure you understand the process. Uh, and then after we right. get done with that, those same folks will want to go through the performance monitoring training which would be next. So that's kind of the schedule of the trainings going forward. Right. We don't want to get too far apart because people tend to get, you know, into other things and forget the stuff right. we just did. Yeah. yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, let me talk to John, our health officer, about who he wants in the next level training. And then, I, yeah, I can definitely coordinate that with um, Danielle and Andrea. Awesome. Okay. Well, if you guys have Thank any you so much. I will let you guys get back to work. Uh, have okay. a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Thank friend. You so Thank you so much. Bye-bye.